Ah, dans le cadre. There you go. Good. Now, yeah, there you go. But don't let your hip move in this way. If you push off that right hip, it's going to move it into the ball. So what you're trying to feel is the squat move stabilizes the hips, it's loaded up, and then as you start to push off this left side, you want to feel like this left hip is moving back and away from the ball, and the right hip's not really moving at all. Technically, it's going to move in a little bit, but you're going to feel like it's just always staying back. typically doing when you make a mistake is that as you instead of kind of squatting you just kind of push like this yeah. and that's just all coming from the right side and it takes a while to develop the feel to realize when that's happening your glute and your quad are really strong it doesn't take very much effort for you to do this that's why it's really important to exaggerate the squat move and actually feel like your hips go back like if there's you know, something behind you you won't actually do this but you need to feel that your hips could like bump something back behind Squat, even more. There you go, that's a squat move. You feel a lot more activation in your legs there, right? But your legs at the end of the day are where you're going to get your power. So as you squat, you, what you're doing is loading and engaging these muscles that otherwise are just kind of not doing anything to help you out. And that's why you really fire your arms hard at the top of your hips to start doing anything. You're not getting any help from them. So now your arms can chill, these get loaded up, and then when I push hard off that left side, that's where that snap happens. You watch every long hitter on the planet. Any LDA guy, Tiger, Tony Finau, Phil Mickelson, Bo Watson, their, leg, their lead legs actually come off the ground with the driver time and they're really wailing them. You're doing just pushing and spinning, right? You need leverage. And leverage comes from creating angles and then releasing those angles. So if you're just here and your right leg straight the whole time, you just straighten it up. 
there's no leverage there, right? But if you exaggerate, if you're going to jump, and then you actually physically can jump, and push off the ground hard, that's where you start getting a lot of power with no effort. It's just coming from your big muscles. So don't be afraid to really squat a little bit to exaggerate it. Increase that knee flex as you start down. More, 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 more. Squat down. You're going to do a squat at the gym. Squat. There you go. And don't, don't push off the right. But you got your left hip out of the way. That was good. Watch your head. Do it again. Relax the right side. Squat down. Good. There you go. So now you have time for your arms to get to here. Mm -hmm. Now start to post up. And you get your hands here. Perfect. Again. Okay. Squat. Let your arms come down. Good. So you feel some ground. You can push off the ground. Post up off that left side. Perfect. You care? You're pushing off your right side? Yeah. Did you feel it that time? Yeah. Alright, so show me your best squat move this time. Okay, guys, I want to interject here real quick on this lesson and talk about something that's super common that plagues so many golfers and absolutely destroys any chance of having a powerful downswing sequence. And it's something so simple, but it's so common that, uh, and she's doing it consistently over and over again that I want to talk about it because this will help you if you struggle with consistency and contact, getting power from your downswing, feeling like you're having to work really hard in your downswing. All of that stuff is really quite simple to fix once you understand a couple simple things. So what I'm going to talk about here, we look at this, uh, this is when we first started, and I apologize, some of the video, uh, I don't have all the clips because I was recording in 4K and the card filled up and so on and so forth. So I apologize, some of the stuff at the beginning is left out and some of the stuff at the end. But what you see here, when we first started, you'll notice that as she starts down her lower body, isn't really doing a whole heck of a lot, but her hands have moved two feet, three feet, and the same time her legs, her left knees maybe moved a couple inches. So again, this is just really common uh, when you're firing from the top with just your arms instead of using your lower body. And then you're going to notice that as she comes into impact, that right heel is way up in the air, very obvious that you're pushing off the right side. And of course, the other dead giveaway is when your spine straightens up like this and is essentially vertical and you've lost your posture completely, that's going to dramatically affect plane and path because as you'll learn on rotary swing, we talk about swing plane and how spine angle is one of the primary dictators of swing plane and path. So all of this stuff leads to immediate inconsistency. So what we're trying to do is fix what her body's doing. And that is how you fix swing plane and path, not by manipulating the club and saying position the club here, position the club there. Golf would be impossible, and it is impossible if that's how you're being taught. You're probably frustrated if you're taught to just manipulate the club like this, do that. It doesn't work. But swing plane does work when you correct it by fixing the actual problem, which is how the body's moving, the position of the spine, and so on and so forth. So what you'll notice as we start down with this sequence, as she does the little squat move that we talk about on rotaryswing.com, that she's now, as she comes into impact, has a spine angle here. She's maintained it. Now, of course, this is just a drill, and so we're working on that. But you have to first understand what causes you to lose your posture, which is obviously pushing off that right leg, which she's still doing here. You can see, watch her right knee straighten up. Very obvious that she's pushing still hard off that right side. We talk about that a ton on the site. Um, but even doing that, because she's now focused on doing the squat move to bring the club down instead of just firing her arms and learning to move from the left side, that this left hip has moved out of the way. And now look at the difference in her posture. That's pretty dramatic, obviously, and that's a huge difference in how it's going to affect plane and pass. So now we can actually get everything to work the way that we need to. But what, the big thing I want to talk about here is watch what her head does. 
right away, her head starts to turn, her eyes turn, and shoulders turn, and that gets her arms stuck. You can see our arm is smashed up against your chest here still, and this right elbow is stuck back here behind the shirt seam. That is, by all definitions, a stuck position just happening very, very early in the downswing. The reason this matters is one of the mantras I talk about all the time when I'm giving my lessons is that wherever your eyes go, your head's going to go, and wherever your head goes, your shoulder's going to go. So if you start looking out here while you're doing these drills, and you'll notice that as I go through this lesson, I keep correcting her over and over again for this, her shoulders start unwinding. And that is a death move because now our arms are stuck. And not only does this lead to uh, left shoulder impingement, which is one of the most common golf swing related injuries. If you've got any pain in your left shoulder, this left shoulder girdle, the back of your left arm, uh, if you keep doing this move where you open up your head, open up your shoulders and leave your arms draped across your chest and rotate really hard into it aggressively, then you can start uh, pinching the subacromial space in your left shoulder and that leads to nerve pain and actually requires surgery if you let it go too long. So the simple fix is just don't do that, right? Don't look out here. Keep your head looking down at the ball where it is until the ball's long gone. Never look out here because it's going to destroy your sequencing and cause a loss of power. Now you're going to say, oh, well, Annika Sorenstam did it and David Duvall did it. And yes, absolutely they did. Not that you can't do it, but of course it also predetermines uh, what your ball flight is typically going to be. It's a really common way to hit a, a push fade. It's a good way to hit a push fade by just ripping your shoulders open. But again, it leads to not only inconsistency, but potential shoulder injury. It's a very, very common injury. And that's what we, why we work with our rotor, our rotor medical panel to make sure that we don't get you injured. Uh, and this is one of the most common ways to do it. So just keep your shoulders back, keep your back at the target, however you want to think about it. Keep looking back away from the ball or excuse me, away from the target, anything that's going to help you keep your eyes focused, not down range, which is very tempting because that's where we're trying to send the ball. And so we want to look, but you have to avoid that bad habit. Yeah, that was very good. Let's take a look at it real quick. That's first what we were doing for something. Straighten it right away. Right away, it's coming up on the air right away long before it matches. Much more powerful looking there. Back your arm. See how your arm smashed against your chest? Where's your head looking? The head's like out here somewhere. Right? That, instead of you know, holding your arms back there and like turning your head, which is going to turn your shoulders, let your arms start to work back down while your shoulders stay shut. But now your hips look way better. They're leading the downswing place, where before your arms were ripping down here. They're still a little, they're firing a little early, but not as bad. Once your hips are there, now we've got some leg power that we can put in the swing. A lot better there. It's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. Still, the right hip is still pushing a little bit hard there. But otherwise, it's looking a lot better with getting your arms out. We just need to do a little bit more to the top. So go back to the top corner. Okay, now, no head turn. Just squat down. See, when I said just squat down and get your shoulder moved to six inches, do it again. Go to the top again. Okay. Now, I'm not going to let you move your shoulder. Okay. You squatted, but what did you not do? You also didn't turn, that's good, but what did you do wrong? Where's your weight? You got to get back over to the left side. Yeah. Okay, again. So when you squat, when you're squatting the square, you also stop moving your hips, not your shoulders, but your hips back to the left as you're doing that. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're trying to turn your head. Okay, now keep going down, let your arms fall more down. Oh, you're almost stuck. Let your arm come back right here. Again. There you go, good. And the post up. Uh, your hip, your right hip move that way. So watch me right up for a second. Here's what So this looks good. And then as I said, post up, you push your right leg and then your elbow gets stuck against your right hip and has nowhere to go. Yeah. Right? So instead of that, you're squatting back to the left, squatting back to square. As I post up, my hip, my elbow's gonna get more in front of my hip. Mm -hmm. I gotta let it come back out here, 
and then it's a very simple release from there. But from here, the only thing I can do, only thing I can do is really keep just spinning my hips to try and get the club back. Telling you, like right now, we know that you're just gunning from the top with your arms, right? Mm -hmm. 
And if I tell you, you don't fire from the top of the arms, you're not going to know what to do, right? But I can't tell you not to do something because you don't have anything else to replace that movement. Something's got to get that club hit again. This is it. That whole initial move from the top to here is literally just that. And you don't have a choice. Your hands are going to be right here. If they just fall down with gravity alone, it's going to bring them to here. And that's a 100% trunk move. Nothing with your arms. Right. Technically, they're going to be doing something. But way less than what you're doing right now. Because your legs right now, if we had a ratio, your, your hands are moving three times as much as your lower body. Mm -hmm. And we want to flip that and get your legs to move twice as much as your arms, at least during that initial phase of the swing. Because that's what allows you to maintain lag and build and create even more lag in the downswing while also recruiting muscle fiber that you're not using. Right. If you have two legs, with the majority of your muscle mass is in your back, your hamstrings, your glutes, and your quads, and you're not using any of them. You're using all arms, and that's it. So as soon as we can take that out, not only can this relax and start being used for more control, that's really what I want you to think of when I use my hands. Manipulate the club. Right? If I want to hit low, left, right, high, whatever, my hands are always left in reserve so that I can do something to, to do something with the club face. If my hands are doing all of this work from the top to try and produce speed, I got no chance of making these little fine tuning corrections to make, I want a six yard draw instead of a 10 yard draw or whatever. They can't, they're trying to do too much and there's a limit, right? Mm -hmm. But if I can replace that initial source of speed with my trunk movement and recruit a bunch of muscle, and this doesn't have to work that hard because you're, I'm literally just doing this, right? That's mm -hmm. all you saw, you're barely dropping. But that actually activates a lot of muscle. And then, as I start to be able to fire that, then I can do whatever I want with my arms and hands at the bottom. It gives me a ton more control to manipulate the ball. So that's what I'm trying to get you to feel is flipping the sequence around. Lower body initiates everything. You've heard that a million times, swing starts from the ground up. That's what it really means, is doing this sequence of movement. The best players in the world all do the same stuff. They start down, they use their legs, they jump up in the air. If they're trying to hit it really hard, they physically jump. You can't jump unless you go down from how am I going to jump from here? Right? There's nothing I can do. But if I can do a little bit of a squat move, then I feel a lot more power in my trunk. But more importantly, it just gets the sequence of the swing to unfold correctly. Yeah. So let's try that again. To the top, you're going to feel a big squat. Let your arms come down. Okay, you hung back on the right side. So your squat move a lot of times is this. It's to the left and the opening back up to open. There you go, not your head though. Lower body was good though. Head's got to chill though. Better. Yep. Ah, pushed off your right side of the bottom. Your right heel came up, and I can see your glute contracting. You're pushing your pelvis into the ball, and that's going to get your arms stuck in it. And you got to use your arms to flip it at the bottom. Good. Relax that. Do you feel your. Coming the first half down was way better though. Mm -hmm. You got your arms back down in front of you, you got the squat move, it's just right at the bottom now. Instead of finishing it by posting up just with the left, you're trying to push off the right and get too much thrust off there. Good. Relax the right, good. There you go. And then let the club release. That was really good. Better.
make sure each time you get that leg straight and you feel uh, the glute and your quad and hamstring are engaged. Good, straight left leg. Nice and solid left leg. Good. Right leg, right heel is up in the air though. There you go. Relax that right foot just like that. Perfect. From there, all it is literally is just letting the club release. You've done all the heavy lifting, and it's really just been your legs that did all the heavy lifting to bring that club all the way into a perfect hitting area. Mm -hmm. So your arms have been left in reserve, right? Now you've got something. If you want to add a little zest to it or change the ball flight or whatever, you have your hands to do that now because they're in a great position to do that. So that's the whole trick. And when you stop and check yourself here, that's what you're really making sure that you did right. Is because at some point, if you're going to play at a high level, you're going to manipulate the ball flight one way or the other, right? Whether you hit it the same way every time, or you ball, you shape it. Most of the guys these days typically hit one kind of consistent shot, whether it's a cut or a draw or whatever, but you can't do that every single time to play at a high level. You've got to be able to change the ball flight, especially trajectory and spin control. So this is going to allow you to do that if you can get the sequence right, which is you're doing, right? It's just learning to be able to chunk this together like you're doing now, and slowly make those pauses smaller and smaller. So right now you're going to the top, stop. You might, as you do that, you might try to put it together with the transition, because then it'll be more athletic and more natural. Instead of going to the top, stopping completely, and then coming through, because the muscles don't work that way, right? We're really loading them dynamically and getting everything back. So let's see if we can put those two together, and then we'll just start making those pauses smaller and smaller as we get down again. So your head went right away, right? It's okay. You're going to make mistakes, but you just got to correct them. Squat. A little more squat. Don't be afraid to flex those knees. There you go. That's okay. What would you feel? Right, right. Yeah. You're still pushing off of it. It takes a while to get a feel like that, with that left leg yeah. for most people. So on to it. What do you feel? <laughs> Everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Close there. Still pushing off the right a little bit. Yeah. You hit that a long ways though. <laughs> 242, that's impressive. <laughs> the check swing. I wish we could have had the uh, track mandate on Zach Johnson's little Masters boot where we hit it off the T marker. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So he was on, uh, I think it was 12, and just standing there, he's like, put this T on the ground. So that you make a practice swing, hits the ball. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Bounces off the team mark. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame that he will always be remembered for that shot now. <laughs> yeah, good. That's a better squat there. Good. Relax the right leg. Good. Let's try a couple. It's okay. You pushed off the right there. You're going to feel that. It's better. We've already felt this second. So, standing over here, I want you to see the not. So, when you're coming down, your tendency once you get to this point, is to release like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit. But you're turning, 
and holding off the release a little bit. Mm -hmm. And part of that is pushing off this right limb that's rotating your body through the shot. Instead, it's this. Right, so my forearm, we're going to release, but my chest doesn't change. That's why I don't want you looking out here at all, because that will always get everything opening up, and that always holds the face off. So when you get into impact, when you start here, I want you to be looking straight down at the ground and letting nothing but your forearms release here. So now when I look in the mirror, my chest is more or less still pointing here. It's obviously going to get pulled open a little bit, but you don't want to be practicing like this, where my heel's up in the air, my body's all totally forward, my chest is rotated through because that's going to slow the face down. My arms doing this can move way faster than you'll ever rotate your rib cage. So if you get comfortable just doing this, you're still going to be looking at the ground, stopping, don't look out there, look right there, and check your positions. We just talked about this. <sighs> this is why I didn't have kids right here. You guys are all over. Two inches of movement is huge. There you go. Now it's like a club release. A little 
little bit over turned. And that's again right hand helping that out too much. Just like kind of towed up, barely, you can have it slightly towed in, but this guy's always got to be straight at that point. There you go. If it's not, your left arm's bent at that point, what do you think that means? If, if my arms are here, and my fingertips are even, and I move my hand across my chest, what happens to my left arm? It has to bend. If my fingertips are going to stay the same, right? Well, on the grip, unless your hands are sliding up and down the grip, then your hands are effectively locked together. And so if you move your right arm by pushing it across your chest, it forces your left arm to bend. So that's going to start showing up in everything with the ball flight. Like if you're going to take deep divots and all that stuff, when you see this left arm bent like this in your release position, you know that you shoved your right arm, pushed it across your chest too much. Pushing with the right. The whole goal at the end of the day when you're trying to feel the release of the club is that you just imagine like a sledgehammer. Like your weight, that the head weighs like 50 pounds. You wouldn't be trying to push it through with your arm. You're not strong enough with your upper body, right? But you could get some momentum going and swing that sledgehammer and let it swing through. And if you let that sledge, sledgehammer swing on its own volition, it would pull your arm straight, right? Because it's heavy, it's got all this angular momentum, it's going to pull your arm straight. With the golf club, you can kind of cheat because it's light, and you can kind of push it around and flip it around, and that's the whole difficulty of all. And if those club heads weigh 50 pounds, everybody would have a really good golf swing, but they don't. So when you're doing this, you want to feel that the club is really pulling you to release and pulling your arm straight, not that you're trying to push it through. Let the club go. Imagine it's 50 pounds. Perfect. The arm stays perfectly straight. That's it. And that's you taking yourself out of the swing, taking you out of the control position in back. You're putting Sir Isaac Newton in the driver's seat. It's just like we're launching you to the moon, right? We've got to just get it right at this takeoff. But after that, it's gravity and inertia. It's going to take everything out of control from there. So when we get down halfway here, I don't want you doing anything with that golf club unless you're trying to manipulate a shot, right? But from here, just let leverage and physics take over, your arms are nice and chilled out, and let that club just zing through, and you can keep your arms and hands nice and soft. Good. Yeah. Okay. Lower body, your weight shifts looking a lot better. Lower body initiating the downswing is much better. Didn't shift over as much there. So when you're making that initial squat, you can make it it's not just a squat under both feet, you're also shifting to the left. So if anything, you're increasing more weight on the left side. So remember at the top, you're 70 to 80% on your right. And when you're squatting back to square, if you just stay back there, it's not going to do any good, right? So we've got to go from 80% here, and at some point we've got to be 90% over here. So as you're doing that squat, make sure that you squat and increase more weight onto the left side. chunk it exactly like you did there. These aren't going to go very far. Do you want to do each stage? Yep. We're going to break it into chunks just like you did. Nothing changes. It's just a ball there. Okay. Ah, yeah. So what did you do there? You got here. Everything was perfect. And then instead of finishing up your post, you're like, oh. So we didn't change anything. We just put a ball there. And all of a sudden, your focus changes, right? This is what I wanted you to see. So when you're practicing down here, you can't just mindlessly pound a bunch of balls. Your focus is still going to be 120% on what your body is doing, just like it was when there was no ball there. So when you find something like that that happens, it's normal, just means you don't have enough reps in yet. And so you can you'll make mistakes, but you want to challenge yourself to hit balls and see what mistakes you make. So I'd say going back was great, the first initial move was great, and then it fell apart from there. Right? So that's okay. 
we know that. And now on the next one, make sure that once you get here, that you post up and then release the plug. Yeah.
All right, guys. Sorry about that. This is where uh, the camera, the camera memory card filled up here. 4K takes up a lot of juice really fast. But so this was the first swing from face on. We didn't show this early on because we didn't have that footage um, of the video. But uh, here, I want to show you what's going on, what we were really trying to tackle. And you'll see right here a very obvious uh, loss of lag, loss of leverage in her swing. And so then she's got to try to do something to make up for it. And so we're just kind of like dragging the club, pushing the club through impact here. No real snap or push. So you can see oh, the right foot is coming up off the ground there. It's pretty typical when somebody loses a lot of lag that they start trying to drive hard off that right leg to try and make up for it. And so the simple thing, of course, to do is to how to figure out how to maintain that lag or figure out what's causing you to lose it. And that's what we were doing by giving her that squat move that allows her to not fire her arms. You can see as she starts down, and she gets in a wonderful position at the top, but then as she starts down, it's all arms. Watch right from the first move. Watch how much her hands move during the first part of the swing. Very little lower body movement in relationship to how much the hands have moved during that transition. And then the left arm kind of gets bent here, and then the right arm does all the pushing. So what we did at this stage in the lesson is we started working on some drills to get her to sequence this together. So she's working on the lower body movement first to bring the arms down for her using her trunk, using her legs. Of course, she's still got that little head turn going on there, but notice the left arm is staying straight now. And this acts as a lever. Now, as you can see how much more lag she has during this drill, a ton more leverage when she's not firing the arms, pushing against the left arm with the right, which is causing the left arm to bend. Now that left arm can act as a lever in the swing, the right arm you can see is now in a much better position versus where we were here. You can see it's kind of buckled up behind the hip. She's a little bit stuck. And now here the arms have gotten back in front of the body and we're in a great position. This is the perfect position to deliver the club from. And this is what you're wanting to drill when you're working through the five-step system on rotary swing. At this point, the left arm, or excuse me, the left leg should be basically posted up, not hyperextended locked out, but straightened up. Right leg, right heel should still be on the ground. Right knee should still have some flex in it. Belt buckle should be 30, 40 degrees open. Left hand in front of the right thigh. Club shaft should parallel the ground. Toe up, club toed up. We're in a great position here. So then we worked up to hitting balls doing this exact same drill. So step by step, we kind of progressed through. And we did the same thing. We get to the top. She focuses on using her trunk to bring the club down. Left hand parallel, excuse me, in front of the thigh, right, the uh, club shaft parallel to the ground. Now we have some leverage. And then in that last split second, that's when you release all that leverage and she gets into a great impact position here. Perfect. And notice how much more stable and quiet her lower body is. See, the trick is if you fire your arms from the top and your legs chill out at the start of the downswing, then they tend to get active when you want them not to be, which is as you near into impact, which is what you saw here. Here, legs are, you know, right leg, right heel is coming up. She's actually getting into a full follow through foot position when the club's not even to three o'clock on the other side of the ball. This is a desperate attempt to try and make up for that loss of leverage in the swing. So you start kind of driving hard with the legs. Now, what we want is those legs at impact when everything matters. That's when we influence the ball. It's when we actually make contact. That's when our lower body needs to be quiet. It should have done all the heavy lifting already. And now it needs to brace up to give us control at impact. And that's what she has here. Now she's in a great position. Her legs can chill out. Now we can focus on just releasing the club. But if her pelvis is moving around all over the place, foot's coming up in the air, knees kicking in, losing spine angle, etc., then golf is a big bucket of parts that's very difficult to put together. But you can see from how from here how little her body moves, and now it's just focusing on releasing the club and getting into this great release and extension position. So the whole trick to this is work through the system step by step. People skip the weight shift stuff. They skip the core rotation stuff. They go right to adding the right arm, adding the club, and that's what causes you trouble. So if you want to go through, you can see just in this hour-long lesson, we get into having lag at the right times, having a great impact position, a great release position, quieting the lower body, dramatically improving the potential for consistency there when things aren't moving around all over the place. You just have to work the system, and I promise you'll get better.